Let's generate an NFT. Boom, 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 boom. Oh my God, that is perfect. That is perfect. Okay, now throw your head back. <laughs> kind of smile, like, like kind of get a little coy. A little coy there. Oh, beautiful. That is awesome. That is awesome. Listen, can't we just enjoy the museum? Jerry, this is how I earn my living. I make NFTs. What is the deal with NFTs? <laughs> it's a non-fungible token. I take pictures, I hash the pictures, and I put them on the blockchain for Bitcoin. And people buy these. <laughs> yeah, I just sold my last picture for 1.2 Bitcoin. 1.2 Bitcoin, what's that in fiat currency? Oh, about uh, $37,000. <laughs> Do you like milkshakes? <laughs> So an NFT is a non-fungible token, and here's what that means. A Bitcoin is a Bitcoin. I can use Bitcoin to buy a car or I can use Bitcoin to buy a pizza, but every Bitcoin has the same value. An NFT is non-fungible. That means one FT might be worth more than another NFT. So NFTs are not interchangeable. They are not fungible. Now, before I get started, this video is the second video in a three-part series on blockchain, NFT, and proof-of-work algorithm. So if you haven't watched my first video on blockchain, this NFT video builds on that first video. Up here somewhere, there should be a link to the first video. Go watch the blockchain video first, then come back and watch this video. Now, if you want to follow along at home, the code for what I'm about to do is on my GitHub or my website. You can find that below. Uh, along with the NFTs that I minted. Like, subscribe, leave a comment down below. And if you want, feel free to connect with me on LinkedIn or Twitter. So I created six 64 by 64 pixel images of characters that I play in my videos. Circleback Jack, Posh Ryan, Rayanne, Regular Ryan, Seymour, and Team Lead Ryan. Now, when I say an NFT is non-fungible, that basically means that an NFT of Rayanne might be worth more than an NFT of Circleback Jack. So let me just review blockchain really quick. We start with a simplified block. This simplified block has a previous hash, and that hash goes to the block before it. It has a nonce, or number only used once. We're not going to worry about the nonce in this example. I'm just letting you know it's there. It'll be used in the third video. And we have data, the information inside the block. Then we take this whole block and we hash it. That becomes the block hash. And we string all these blocks together in a chain with the next block relying on a seed of the previous block's block hash. NFT blocks work the same way, but with one extra step. So the data comes in, we have the previous hash, we have the data, and we have the nonce. But this data is actually a JSON file with a bunch of transaction information and the actual bits of the file that we want to mint. We take that JSON file and hash it. The resulting hash gets put into the data field. And then this information gets put into the block. Okay, so let's see this in action. Now, we already created our blockchain software in the last video, so we're just gonna right-click on this. We're gonna so go to Add, and we're gonna go to New Item, and we're just gonna call the item uh, class of NFT. This is gonna hold our NFT. Now, when we finish minting the NFT, that NFT is going to go into our block as the string data. So the NFT class is just gonna hold the JSON information until we process it. So let's go back to the NFT class and we'll drop in a couple of things here. We're gonna drop in transaction string and we're gonna drop in a property that's just gonna return the transaction string. All right, then all we need is a constructor that's gonna create our NFT. So we're gonna take the JSON that we got. Uh, it's gonna be a from, an action, buy or sell or whatever. Uh, who it's going to, and the bytes of the actual NFT image. We're going to take this information. We're going to throw it into a transaction string. I know we wouldn't normally do this, but we're going to use strings so that way you can see what's going on. And we're done. That's actually it. So now let's save this and we're going to work on the actual engine for minting the NFT. Okay, so in keeping the naming scheme consistent, I'm going to create a new class called uh, NFT High Level. And I'll drop that in here and hit add. All right, now this is the class that's going to mint the NFT. Okay, so we're just going to create a method called mint NFT. That's going to take a string, 
uh, some sort of action, the two, and the file name, which will be whatever JSON is passed in. We're going to take the file. We're going to read it into a byte array. Uh, if you do this in real life, you should definitely use a try catch, make sure the file is there. But we're just doing this for speed here. Once we get that byte array, we're going to hash it using SHA1. And uh, just let me add that in as a using statement so that way Visual Studio stops yelling at me. We're going to create the NFT, and then we're just going to return the NFT's transaction string. And that minted transaction string is what we're going to send to the block. Okay, now that we got everything set up, let's go back to the program that we wrote in uh, part one. And let's delete this. We're going to keep this down here because we're going to see a readout of the NFT. Let's create a new instance of uh, blockchain high level. Uh, I'll Visual Studio stop yelling at us. Now I want to import the actual NFTs. So I, uh, I have a library that I created and it's up on GitHub. I'm just going to copy this and I'm going to go all the way back to my blockchain video demo and drop into this folder here. Paste. Windows 11 takes a little getting used to. Now that it's in there, oh, there it is, images, and the NFTs are right here. Here's something that you need to do because you're going to pull your hair out if you don't do this. You need to select copy always or copy if newer. Uh, this is going to make sure that your uh, images actually get deployed to your bin. If you don't do this, I guarantee you that you will pull your hair out wondering why you can't find your images when the program runs. So make sure all these images say copy always. And that should give us the images inside the bin directory of uh, bin debug.net 6.0. In fact, you know what? Uh, let's go there and make sure. So if I open up uh, bin debug.net 6.0, there, there's all my images. So by performing that action in Visual Studio, this is going to make sure all your images go over to the bin directory. Now let's simulate us receiving some JSON here. Now let's pass all of the uh, information in from the command line. So we're going to pass uh, from to uh, the action, the file name, all in the command line. We'll get it from the command line arguments. And now we actually have to put it inside the uh, NFT and then send that to a block. So we already created the first block when we instantiated the blockchain high level. So let's create the NFT first. So that'll just be uh, string NFT equals minting the NFT from NFT high level from action to and the file name. And then we just got to take that string NFT and send it into the blockchain as a new block. Okay, let's run this, but first I wanna show you how to actually add parameters when you run your project. So you can do this automatically, just right click on the, uh, on the project, go to properties, uh, then go down to debug. And it, in previous versions of Visual Studio, this will say something different, but I'm using 2022. Uh, so click on open debug launch profile, and here under command line arguments, just paste in your command line arguments. So I'm putting these in as if I'm typing them. Ryan sells Seymour this image of circlebackjack.bmp. Uh, once I got that in there, then all I just have to do is close it. Okay, now when we run this, those command line arguments will automatically be sent. Uh, so let's put a breakpoint here and we'll run this and we'll see what happens. All right, so as we step through, you can see that uh, the from is Ryan, the cells is the action, the two is the Seymour, and the file name is images circle back jack of BMP. Now we're actually taking this information and we're going to mint the NFT. So let's step into that. We grab our byte array, we grab our hash, we create the NFT, and that's going to give us a transaction string which, you know, you might not be able to see that. So let me just drop this in here. All right, so you can see the transaction string is Ryan sells Seymour, and then there is the hash of the NFT. Fantastic. So let's step out of this, and we're going to send this right into the block, add the block, and now let's actually just continue and run this, and we'll see what happens on the output. 
Okay, so this is it. We have our output. As the first block is the Genesis block, as always, that is automatically created when we instantiate the blockchain. Uh, now this block height is only one because we've only added one NFT. We have the block hash. We have the previous hash, which is the same as the original Genesis block hash. And then we have our transaction data. Ryan sells Seymour the hash of this particular image. And if you want, you can keep adding more and more NFTs. So as you can see, an NFT is really nothing more than a hash that proves that you own a certain set of bits. Now I'm sure you see this has applications way outside of NFTs. Think of contracts. I mean, when you buy a house, you go through all this paperwork and stuff. Wouldn't it be great if you could just electronically sign your documents and then shove that into a blockchain and now there's proof that you actually own that house? And the whole hashing thing really does prove ownership in pretty much anything that can be digitized. So that's it, that's NFTs. So this is the second part of a three-part video. My third video, if it is done, will be available over here after the Seinfeld skit. That video is going to be about proof of work and how you actually get paid for mining cryptocurrency. Now let's see what Jerry and Picture Girl are up to. Do 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 do. Wrong. I hear you like to go bowling. <laughs> yeah, that's me. I'm uh, I'm a regular Ernie McCracken. So uh, <laughs> you got the balls? <laughs> it's beautiful. <laughs> Now. Well, actually, since we're conducting a transaction of a more exotic nature, perhaps you'd accept Bitcoin as payment. <laughs> this I cannot do. Only take fiat currency. <laughs> actually, I think it's pronounced fiat currency. <laughs> now is double price. <laughs> do 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 do